Noita, a game that is way too good to have this small of a player base. It's difficult, mysterious, but very satisfying when you get the hang of it. And let's not forget the main selling point, the pixels. I mean, look at all these pixels. Oh, pixels, yeah. <coughs> nothing, nothing. So every pixel is simulated separately and has its own properties and relations with other pixels. Liquids vaporize when near fire. Some liquids get clarified when you put water in them. Lava turns into lava stone if you put some sort of liquid in it. You can drill through solid pixels to get gold out of the walls. Or some puzzles even expect you to do something with the pixel physics to get a reward. For instance here, this box is outside is metallic, the inside is wooden and it's closed off with a stone. If I manage to burn down or destroy the wood inside, then I get my reward. It is extremely cool. Like, really 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 cool how the pixels are built into the world and how they get the major point in the game and not just how they are built into it how they are executed too they are so satisfying sometimes now don't take this as an in-depth review or something i'm just showing you a game i like that i have played for like 80 hours so i don't know much about the game either it's just big fun and wanted to do this why not now in this game there are pixels toxic sludge acid magicians feral dog ghouls stone look at this look at this Stone. <laughs> Rage. Stone slates with gibberish. Guy with hands. Really. There's a lot of toxic sludge. An impending feeling of doom that never. <laughs> Maybe explain a bit slower, you piece of shit. Okay, okay. Just calm down. The first thing you see is this cape man. Chad of all Chads. The murderer of the universe. Don't let the looks fool you though. He's thin, small, but he wants everything dead. Look, he surely wants you dead too. He just cannot shoot you with his. <laughs> Ah, shtick. Capeman's weapon of choice. There are endless amount of shtick in the game with its stats and spells you can put in them. So the statistics are basically this. If shuffle is on, the spells are gonna be used up randomly. So not from left to right, but in any possible, you know, what's the word? I forgot the word. Do you know that word? Editing me, please put the word in there because I really cannot remember. <laughs> spells per cast, completely self-explanatory. How many spells are used up per cast? Cast delay and recharge time go hand in hand. It took me way too much time to understand. Cast delay is basically the time in between spells in one line of spell. And recharge time is basically one line of spell after one line of spell. How much time is there in between? So a good example is this. This wand... The, eh. Wand? What is that? That's called shtick. So this shtick basically has 0.10 cast delay and 0.8 recharge time. That means a single projectile spell shoots like this. Because it always has to use the recharge time. So 0.8 in this case. But if it has multiple spells after each other, then it uses the 0.10 and shoots something like this. As soon as the line of spells is used, of course, the recharge time has to be done again, so 0.8 after the fast burst of shots, also shown by the orange line filling up on the right side. Back from the excursion, let's let's carry on. Mana max and mana charge speed are like also very obvious, the spells use mana and, you know, it, you have played games before, just capacity is how many spells you can put in the shtick. And spread is also very obvious, it just changes the spread of projectile spells. Now there are countless, and I mean countless spells big. to use. Some of them good, some of them bad, some of them... <laughs> Some of them stone, some of them green, some of them blue, some of them bouncy, some of them to strengthen or change your projectile spells, some of them, <laughs> some of them egg, <laughs> egg, some of them fast, some of them floaty, y you get the point. Sticks and spells are your bread and butter, the things to fuel your murder tendencies. You put spells in your stick, and the ones that don't have shuffling on go through the spells from left to right. And with this, you can make some crazy sticks. Like, damn, things be crazy, man. Yes. God damn. So now that you have your weapons, it's time to go out into the world. So the game is made up of sections that you have to go through to get deeper and deeper. Every time you get deeper, you hear this neat little boom. In the end of each section, you have a purple butthole device that brings you to the poopy mountain or some shit. I forgot the names. You can either buy sticks with spells in them or spells separately. And you get a perk, which there's also a lot of, and I don't want to go through all of them. So I only show you a few because uh, I am um, I'm a lazy fuck, as they say. So I'm going to do it fast as shit, okay? Looking mutation, you are spider. Permanent shield, I wonder what that could be. Projectile eater, that thing behind you eats stuff. Concentrated spells, lower spread, bigger damage. Hungry ghost, eats your dick. Revenge tentacle, when you get hit, you punch back with a tentacle and say, 
Yes, that was my voice. Then you can do the rest. You're a big boy, you can do the rest. I, I, I believe in you. And now there's only one more small thing missing. There are also flasks with potions in them. They hold some things like acid or a potion that makes you faster. They're small little things to help you on your journey. But why they are important is this. They get empty. But here's the thing. You can refill them. Akvam Vite, your savior in real life and in game. Because fire is a bitch. But as soon as you burn, you just psh 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 on you and you are good as new. You can also check for the rest of the potions, you big, big boy. Yes, good boy. Let's carry on with the enemies, shall we? There will also be a lot of enemies you will face. But let me tell you straight, as a beginner and even a slightly bit more experienced player, your biggest enemies will be your stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Your urge to shoot the explodies. Um, when kill the people. I saw one. Fire. Your lack of idea of what's going on. Go <gasps> Fire, probably made by you. Look. And literally everything. A urine jar? I don't want to have this. There is pistons. Cool. I want to walk on the pistons, of course. Not dying. Mmm, pistons. Ah! Ah! If this sounds like a lot, that's because it is. The game has no respect towards you or your family. It will make you and your grandma lick its foot and you both will enjoy it. Also, you might have realized that most of the hazards are made by you. Because Jesus Christ, this game is a harsh teacher. You will die countless times, even when you think you are unkillable. There will be some stupid move you make to make yourself suffer, and that's okay. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be. You learn out of the mistakes and slowly, slowly get to a level where not everything instantly kills you. And you have a fighting chance. Still, you will never be unkillable, just don't forget that. To put this into perspective, I have a few Steam reviews I uh, really like that I, that I like to show you. Every place kills you. Everything kills you. You kill you. From the 200 hours I've played so far, 150 were of me killing myself in the first stage through various methods. Highly recommended. After 500 hours I can safely say I sort of understand this game. I think in another 500 it will make more sense. I will update my review then. I accidentally electrocuted myself to death in my own pool of vomit. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I can tell you is get yourself to game and explore. You need to explore quite a bit. Things will be confusing, but that's the good about it. It took me an annoying amount of time to actually not go into the cave first, but explore outside, and I found egg and a script that told me to kill myself. I don't recommend spoiling yourself about the secrets and the map layout. That's why I don't want to spoil you about it. What I do recommend though is the Google tier lists about the perks and spells to minimize the chances to hurt or kill yourself in stupid ways. I personally needed to do that because without it, it just felt bullshit to try everything. The game is currently 19 euros on Steam, but uh, it's, on, it's on sale very often. So I do recommend to get it when, it, when it's on sale or even without it being on sale. It, it, it's definitely worth the money. So what I wanted to do for the video is to kill the boss and cut together the run in which I managed to kill it, but um, I, I didn't manage to do it because the game is uh, harder than I remember. So uh, here's me making weird noises while mining, okay? Hey, have a nice day.